One of the key aspects of working with say views for our drawing production is the view attributes dialog box. This the view attributes dialog box contains many many of the settings we need in order to alter and adjust our drawings. So as you'd be used to with the save view dialog, as you'd be used to with the view attributes dialog box, um, you know it's used for um, adjusting things like turning off line weights everywhere or whether you want your level overrides on or, or off. Um, but there's a new one uh, that's that's with the dynamic view system and it's called markers. So let's have a look at, at what that one does for us. So if we open the view attributes dialog box, you'll see here that the view attributes dialog box um, contains a lot of information. We'll focus in the top area for now and just minimize the second bits and third bits at the bottom. Um, so we have our markers. Now our markers are these things down here. Now these things come with every single view um, it's in our save view dialog box. So what we'll do is just uh, clear the, the clipping boundary. Just make sure we go back to say this view and we'll rotate to a front view there and have a look at the markers. So you'll see here that the markers um, represent every view or every view with a cut, um, like a plan, section, elevation or detail, um, they come with a marker. And the reason for that is that sometimes if we hover over, you'll see in the mini call out, we're able to turn that call out off. You still want to know where your views are in order to say turn the call out back on. But in addition, we can turn the markers off and you'll see a drop down here, which allows us to turn all sorts of markers off. So we have markers that come with the new parameter constraints. We have markers that come with our call outs or detailing symbols as they're called here and also links, other links to other files in our model. So if we were to turn off the, um, the detailing symbol markers, you can see those markers disappear. Or we could turn all the markers off as a whole group. So in addition to the presentation area uh, of our view attributes, once we have evoked a view that contains a clip, a plan, section, elevation or detail, we get some extra areas in our view attributes dialog box, one of them being the building area. So the building area is broken down into three tabs. We have the general area, we have the architectural area, structural area, and mechanical area. So in the general area, um, we have three three main parts to it. We are able to um, alter some settings in the cut view, the forward view, and the back view. For the forward view, we have drawing symbols and unify. So drawing symbols will be things like doors, where the 2D representation in the forward view may be different to the door itself. So we can enable that. And Unify works with things like, let's say, concrete walls. So where two walls are abutting each other at, say, right angles, and you don't want a join line between them, you just want that concrete pattern continuing all the way around, use Unify. In the cut area, again, we have drawing symbols and Unify, um, but we can also turn patterns on and off in our cuts. Um, we can generate center lines through certain types of objects, such as walls. Um, and where we're having patterns and we have two objects, we may want the pattern to continue in the same direction rather than follow the direction of the form itself. So we typically have that unchecked so the patterns all go in the same direction. And again, in the back, we have drawing symbols and unify. We have something called an apply reflection, which is typically used for uh, architecture and, and reversing the um, uh, visual view of a ceiling grid so it follows the actual floor plan in plan. And down the bottom we have grid lines and floor lines so we can we can represent grid lines and floor lines in our drawing models. But for structural uh, drawings, um, the structural rules are key. 
So structural rules, very similar to what we had in Drawing Extraction Manager. They re-symbolize the structural objects um, to give them a certain uh, look and feel. You can also add automated labeling to them. Um, and all these bits and pieces that we alter here are all stored inside our save view. So the process of, of, of altering or creating a structural rule um, is very similar to the way it worked in Drawing Instruction Manager. Um, we create a rule, we define uh, what type of criteria we want to base that structural rule on, and we edit the rule itself. We can create widgets, change colors, symbology, and add, add certain labels, um, and apply that to um, representation in a cut or in a forward re-symbolization. We typically, more often than not, base the rule uh, on a part and family criteria. Um, however, there are other options there. Things to consider as well is the new advanced um, flyover options, which tell us which rule is being applied to what object when we hover over them. The priorities of different rules can be moved up and down. So where we may have one rule which needs to take a priority over another, we can we can shuffle that up and down the list with uh, the last rule um, taking the priority. One thing to bear in mind is that uh, the labels that you set here typically don't feature in the 3D model itself, and that is done in the drawing model that we create. However, sometimes you may see the annotation in your 3D model and you can turn that on and off and we'll show you how to do that. And the tolerance angle is a key one to keep note of. If you don't have a tolerance angle um, in your rules here, any rules that are on an angle may not, uh, or any objects that are on an angle that may not appear in your drawing. And that includes objects that have been incorrectly modeled as well that may have a be on a slight angle as well. So that's something to bear in mind. So let's have a look at how um, we can operate the view attributes dialog box in conjunction with um, rules. So let's apply our, uh, our plan. We can either do that by hovering over the call out itself or double clicking the plan uh, view in here. We'll click on the screen. Now, I mentioned earlier that typically we won't see um, automatic annotations within our 3D model. What we are seeing here is our annotation reference back through from the, the 2D drawing model. And if we just turn on our, our marker and our view attributes, in fact, we'll open up our view attributes box in full. and our markers down there, we can actually turn off that reference back of the annotation. And just to show that it is a, it is a reference back, let's open up our um, references file, and you can see that's coming from the drawing that we created uh, earlier. So there's a little show sheet annotations button here in the mini call out, which you're allowed to turn that on and off. Okay, so let's have a look. So we focus on the building tab and we can just minimize the top one here. We talked about the general and the attributes that are affected by this. And we've got our architectural rules. Let's have a look at our structural rules here. So over in the uh, structural rules area, you know, we can alter or add um, new structural rules. So let's take a look at these beams vertically and horizontally. We'll look at the beams uh, top. Rule here, we'll say modify rule, we'll say modify rule here again. And uh, in this case, we might want to add a widget. So let's go to our double line graphics. Display uh, the double line, we'll make the double line line length 50% of the overall member itself. We can give it a, <clears throat> a level, so yes, beam, change the color to red as an example, and give it a slightly thicker weight and say 
OK. Before we do that, over here is our, our label section as well. And as mentioned, this won't appear um, in the 3D model. It'll be the 2D model itself. So we'll say OK, and we'll get that to update the view. And you'll see that update there with that um, with that uh, widget um, and following the criteria that we set there. So that's uh, the um, the structural rules and, and how they operate and behave um, within the dynamic view system, very similar to the, the drawing extraction manager system. We also talked uh, about um, the angles uh, and how we can hide uh, elements or uh, hide members or stop them from being re-symbolized based on a, an angle. So let's have a book of bracing top, which is these uh, yellow bracing lines here. If we go in there, it has a tolerance angle set to 75 uh, degrees parallel to the section. If we were to change that to zero and hit update, we can see that um, we have two members over here which haven't been uh, modeled um, exactly parallel. So, um, uh, you know, to overcome that, we can, you know, add in that uh, tolerance angle. We had it at 75, so we'll put that back in, and then that overcomes any angles or, or any uh, poor modeling in there as well. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.